Hey, good morning everyone. This is R Vermil 47, Robert Vermillion, coming to you from Dallas, Texas. Today is March the 12th, 2012. I'm uh, making this video at 10.55 a.m. Central Daylight Savings Time. I hate Daylight Savings Time, at least the beginning of it. I like it after I get used to it. Anyway, here is the animation showing uh, the coronal mass ejections that have uh, hit bombarded the Earth uh, in the last several days. Uh, the latest one being uh, early in this UT day this morning uh, that um, sparked a pretty good geomagnetic storm itself. Uh, we are continuing to be at a uh, G2 storm level and uh, Candex is at 6. I'll show you that here in a second. But anyway, here's the, the first one that got us from the big flare. This was the secondary flare that came in awfully fast. So that, um, that M8 flare that happened over the weekend it blew out one fast. We've got a coronal hole now. It's a pretty large one. And you can see it's blowing a pretty good density uh, stream out there. Uh, we see it really good on the, the uh, radial velocity here. And uh, it will be affecting Earth uh, probably by the uh, mid to later part of the week. Uh, uh, we'll probably see some uh, elevated geomagnetic storming from that. Here's a look at the uh, three-day satellite environment monitor, and uh, or monitors, should I say, the one that gives us several uh, indicators of what's going on. Again, we are having our G2 storm right now. Here is the K index is at six. Uh, geomagnetic field staying kind of rattly, especially this morning when the hit came. So that will continue. Uh, electron storm continues to be a little elevated. Um, Protons continue to be a, a little elevated, but the high energy protons have like pretty much leveled back off to normal. Uh, mid energy, they should be hitting normal pretty much more today, and we should finally see our S1 uh, solar radiation storm drop off uh, probably by the end of this UT day. So things are beginning to quiet down a bit, with the exception of right now the pretty decent geomagnetic storming that's going on and uh, again this one hit pretty good um, we went into the negative 20 the bait the BZ complex complex the BZ component of the solar wind I talk about sometimes the north-south component uh, went south pretty pretty decent uh, right before we got hit by this and uh, that reason alone is when I say our shells were down so we caught a pretty good hit with that. Now here's the ACE parameters and again uh, as I was just saying the BZ component made it down to a negative 20 and uh, the strength of it which is the white line here the total B strength uh, was pretty high so this did give us a pretty good hit. Uh, the density of the protons uh, it came out pretty good so there was a pretty good uh, proton uh, flux in that uh, coronal mass ejection and again it moved a lot faster than it was expected it was really not expected to, in the beginning probably not to make it to us until either later today or early tomorrow here the wind speed jumped uh, from about 450 kilometers per second up to 600 it's beginning to drop off a little now temperatures beginning to drop off again like I said the geomagnetic storm hit hard but it should drop off relatively quickly and uh, which is a good thing since it happens to be a relatively uh, intense geomagnetic storm. Now here's a graph I haven't showed you before but I found it quite interesting. Uh, it's from uh, Norway and it shows a few things and it's where they, they do monitor the uh, ionosphere, the uh, what what space weather is doing to Earth at the moment and what it's doing to our ionosphere. And what I find most uh, impressive is the induced ground current that hit that became obvious after the geomagnetic storm and uh, CME made it to Earth. Now, this is where we this is the type of stuff that can sometimes put out on a power grid if they're not prepared to shift their power uh, needs and uh, surges to one place or another. We've gotten so much better since 1989. Everybody always always thinks it's like, oh, it's the like 1989, you know, and we're going to Quebec. You know, Canada went like six million people without power and all that for a couple of hours, but uh, it did fry some 
some massive generators and our, our transformers, should I say. Now, this is again what we look for. This also induces current in pipelines and uh, can give false readings on pipeline monitors. It also incre increases corrosion in some pipelines. Anyway, I just thought it was interesting to, I thought, I thought I'd show it to you just to see that here we're humming along, pretty decent, you know, just normal uh, ground induced current or induced ground current, and then wham, um, you know, that's when the power grid operators have to show their best stuff to us and keep us going online because uh we don't want to like to we don't like to go without power here quick look at the uh induction magnetometer from the uh harp uh, research facility in Gakona, alaska uh shows that we had some decent uh banding going on in the two to two and a half hertz range uh earlier in the on the 11th into the 12th and uh, we've had some uh, PC uh, three pulsations and uh, a PC one. I'm sorry, I keep saying PC three, and there are two different things. These are PC one pulsations. Uh, not not a lot. Uh, some scattered interference along the low level, uh, very low frequency. Again, this is measured in hertz, so that'd be zero hertz. So that'd be you know, you know, maybe two or three hertz there. Right here, as you can tell, when the today's geomagnetic storm began, when we got impacted by the CME, it caused a uh, quite a nice little uh, bright banding effect here on the uh, Gakona induction mo and monitor. So not only did it induce ground currents uh, at the surface of the Earth, it gave the ionosphere a pretty good shake. It also gave our geomagnetic uh, field a pretty good shake. So uh, It'll be probably interesting to study the the makeup of this last um, uh, CME that came in. Again, since it arrived earlier than expected and kind of packed more of a punch than the one that came from the, the big X flare the other day. I thought I'd do just a quick little weather update. I haven't done that in the last couple of times that I've been on, uh, just because the space weather's been uh, out there, and we've not had any major outbreaks of severe weather. I don't expect any major outbreaks today, but uh, it's a pretty awesome uh, storm system moving up from uh, the um, Midwest. This is what rained on me down here camping all weekend, and. Uh, this storm is going to probably set off. There's going to probably be the potential for maybe a, a few tornadoes. I expect a lot more wind events and hail events to be reported at the end of the day. And the secondary area down here of potential severe weather. And uh, other than that, uh, we've got another system coming into the west. And it's a quite a potent one. We see the little uh, white specks, kind of the white puffy clouds as I call them. That indicates that it's a, a very cold upper level system. The upper levels are cold, which means it's got pretty good energy with it. But uh, here's our major weather maker right now. Made it rain all weekend on me, and I'll quit whining about that. Now let's see what the Storm Prediction Center says. So here's the day one convective outlook, which would be the convective outlook for today, day one. One day, one day. And um, again, as I showed you on the uh, water vapor satellite, the upper level storm system is churning away up here. That's where you're going to see your best twisting of winds and also the coldest air aloft. So uh, hail, high winds, and uh, there is a chance again for a uh, some uh, scattered tornado uh, reports up in this area, mainly in the, the, the southern Great Lakes area. Uh, I, Barely the northeastern part of Illinois and Indiana, northern part of Indiana, and uh, northern part of Ohio. Uh, we have the secondary area, and again, this will be kind of if the air gets to recover, because there's a, an MCS, which is a mesocyclone system, a mesoscale cyclone system that had formed and has been moving across this area. And what it'll do is the heat of the day kind of gets it all wound up again, is it could drop some pretty good hail or pull down some pretty good wind so wind and hail down here with you never can rule out a chance of a tornado and a severe thunderstorm i just always say that and then up here you've got your 
uh, hail, wind, and then a little better chance for uh, a possibility of some scattered tornadoes. I don't look for like any, doesn't look like there's any long lived and long track tornadoes. It just looks like a general kind of spring type weather. Well, that's it, folks. I tried to cut it a little shorter and it still wound up at 10 minutes. I just can't not talk, can I? And I look down at the microphone still again, even again. Anyway, this is Robert Vermillion from Texas, Dallas, Texas. I hope that y'all have a great day, and uh, I'll be talking to you soon.